My name's Laura. I'm here with Adam and Harley. <laughs> Welcome back to Drunk Rant. <laughs> we are drunk. Um, we will uh, be ranking our top five movies of a certain year. 2020. Um, yes, 2020. Uh, we will be starting off with our worst film. Then we will be doing five, four, three, two honorable mentions, then one. Worst. Oh boy, are you in for a treat? <laughs> we'll be going anti clockwise. Um, Which each of us you guys can in. see. Yes, yep, it'll be Laura Harley, myself. Yeah. Um, the rules are if we land the same pick in the same spot, we do another shot. Half a shot. So Harley will be doing no shots with these two because I literally have a completely different list to them. Harley will probably never do a shot with me. Nah, early 2000s, I reckon we might be the same. You and Adam. Probably me and Harley. But not you and I. Maybe. You never know. We're going to get one one day. Yeah, we'll be one. I don't know. We'll probably get like a number one. and then If you've put Charlie's Angels as your number one of 2000, then yes. We'll, we'll, well have a of shot. course, Cameron Diaz. Come on, who could you not be? Drew Barry, Lucy Liu. Yeah. Why don't I say Drew Barrymore first? I don't know. What's wrong? Well, Just all Drew, three. Look, Drew to be Barrymore honest, the best of the three. If I woke up with Lucy all three Lucy above my bed, no, wanting wrong. to get into my above bed, above your bed. No, like next, hanging from ne- the ceiling, ne- yeah, dead. No. <laughs> Ew. No, from Spy Ropes coming in and they wanted to get into the bed. I love I'm not Spy Ropes, the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> that was shit. Oh <laughs> shit! Um, so I'm not saying no if they want to get into bed. Yeah, imagine Charlie's Angels spy roping into a room in Ringwood. What the hell is spy rope? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like a room like, that is yeah, spy. Like fucking Mission Impossible <laughs> oh. spy roping. And Charlie's Angels. Yeah, and the silver um, van out the front with Matt um, LeBlanc is out there. Matt LeBlanc. LeBlanc. Blank. Remember Blank. that movie Ed? Yeah, with the monkey that pitch that plays baseball. <laughs> it's one of the worst fucking movies no, I've ever seen. No, stop. No. Blasphemy. No. <laughs> Blasphemy. Harley. Blasphemy. Have you Harley. ever seen that show Blasphemy. that he's in? Uh, mates. That Joey. sucks. <laughs> Isn't that mates. your favourite show? Mates, what's mates? Uh, friends. Yes, yeah, the one with oh. the James and Mates. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> I love Friends! Friends is great! Mm. It's great nothing comedy. It's great. Choices. The movie Ed has a 2.7 out of 10 on IMDb. <laughs> Mate, that is better than some movies that people like. So, and Like it's... what? I don't know. <laughs> Anything. Ed? <laughs> <laughs> And Ed's rotten. Baby geniuses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. What's what's Ed's rotten tomato score, Laura? Uh, two. I'll give it a a four percent. Four percent. Is that too low? Um. Well, goddamn, I, it's not even loading because our internet shit at the moment. Oh, there we go. Should I guess it? <laughs> no. Again. Uh, it's a zero. <laughs> Wait, a zero? A zero percent. Oh no. That's fucked, Harley. Seven... You just went on oh, no, record no, no, no. saying it's zero, that It's zero story. out of 17 people. That's yeah. bad. What is happening? Not Seven. even one of them could so have been like... I'm going to go vote for somebody. that. I'm going to go vote for that and I'll get it up a couple of percent. But also the 25% That actually makes me so credit. angry that you would go out of your way to vote on Ed because you don't want it to be a 0%. Because it, it's amazing. I'm going to go vote and I'll put it on 0%. What's not to love about a monkey playing Wait, vote? Have you seen 7... this movie? Yeah, you've seen it. It's been a long time. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, he loves to talk about movies he's never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's only one in today's list. The top review for the movie Ed on IMDb is this one gets my vote for worst movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> no, he clearly he hasn't seen Catwoman. Oh. Oh, I think Catwoman bad. might be rated higher than Ed. I don't, I'm pretty sure Catwoman's not below a three. Yeah, because at least that that's got sexy women in leather. So sexy women playing hot basketball. It has uh, Catwoman has a three point four. Out of how many votes? Uh, out of fucking what is wrong the fact that like is? seven people no seventeen people had voted out of one hundred eighteen thousand. Oh, yeah. There you go, and Ed had seventeen yeah. on Rotten Tomatoes. It had zero. No, but no, Tomatoes. seventeen people had cast their thing. I guess on IMDb it has a two point seven out of ten based on eight point five thousand votes. Still, that's more a lot than a lot of people would have. I thought would have voted to be honest, because who thought about Ed? What year did it come out? Nineteen ninety six. Yes, yeah, see, it's a long time ago. 
I remember watching this religiously as a kid, and I recently tried to rewatch like even a chunk <laughs> of it when I was like stoned, and I was like. I actually want to kill myself. But you can see why you loved it as a kid, though, because it's a cheeky monkey playing baseball. Well, no, one of the just reviews, a lot of piss and fart jokes. Do you remember, do yeah, you remember one of Baby the Geniuses? It's literally Joey plays baseball with a small, frightening monkey that cannot stop farting. <laughs> Half a star they gave it. <laughs> and then they, they um, capture him in a freezer truck. In the freezer. Yeah. And always kill him. Then you (laughs) try to freeze the monkey to dance for some reason. (laughs) But no, it's clearly like a monkey. Oh my god, Ed is in the Batman universe. It's the start of Mr. Freeze. (laughs) Mr. Ed. The the real Ed was the monkey we made along. Batman Universe, Ed (laughs) (laughs) The real Ed was the monkey we made along the way. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. What about the what's the air bud where it's a horse that kicks field goals? Oh. Um, air stud, air horse, <laughs> air horse. No, that's war horse. Bojack horse man. <laughs> I love the one where. Um... Oh, he fucking the monkey one hundred. <laughs> <laughs> These the what fucking reviews are they? The letterbox. Letterbox. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Trash. A masterpiece. <laughs> Monker funnies. <laughs> Family fun movie. It really is a secret stone of movie. Wow, this sucks. (laughs) Absolute rubbish. Worst idea ever. (laughs) A monkey plays baseball. Z, 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 Z. (laughs) Chimp dung thought of it sickens me even now. An adequate, so bad, it's good movie. Gotta see it. An effing work of art. Unfunny monkey movie. Call me crazy. (laughs) Not a bad baseball film. (laughs) A cheerleader with a lobotomy would find this film unintelligent. (laughs) Ed, top 10 of all time. Done. Ah, oh, you're killing me. The worst you, movie of 2020 no, just... was Milan. I don't have anything else to say about it, to be honest, because it just was fucking annoying. Didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't have. <laughs> so it was bad. a fucking okay. horrendous piece of shit, and I'm upset about yeah, it. Yeah, I heard lots of people hated it. So. Yeah. Okay, Very Harley, upset. what is your worst pick of 2020? All right, I have three, and I'm going to say all three. I'm going to say all three, everyone, because they fucking shit me looking them up before. Okay. So, Hoobie Hol- Halloween, whatever the fuck oh, that shit no. was from Adam Sandler. <laughs> I can't believe I actually watched that. I fucking still hate myself for it. Bad Boys for Life was one of the worst movies I think I've also ever seen. It was shot in this weird sepia tone where everyone's oh. really sweaty. It's midnight and people are still sweating. It's fucked. And also Bill and Ted's fucking weird adventure, the last one. Wow. It was one of the worst movies I think I've ever watched. Wow. That pissed me off. It was shitty and cheap and no, nah, it just ruined it. I just want to um, put a disclaimer out there. These are our own opinions. These are Harley's opinions. They do not relate to me at all. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. Bill and Ted's. Terrible, terrible ending, terrible, just a cop out, just terrible. All right, uh, Laura, get prepared to do a shot, because my number one worst pick of 2020 is also Milan. Fuck. That movie was boring as fuck. I don't even, I don't really care about the original Milan too much. I, I have to say, Milan is probably one of my very favourite movies, the 1990 I don't care for it at all. It is fine. The but OG Disney one this, is actually pretty good. It's fucking sick, and I don't need you and your slander. You can just say, music, I agree with you. The, the music and songs was, in that one are bangers. Yeah, they are. But this Mulan, horseshit, don't watch it, it's crap, it doesn't make any sense, whatever. It was just boring. All right, chuck with my glass, I'll do a shot too. So, Damn um, it. <laughs> Cheers to Milan being a piece of trash movie that I... I'll honestly, cheers to that and I'll cheers to my shitty movies. Yeah, you can cheers... To, I'll cheers yours except for the last one. All right, fair enough. You guys thought it was serviceable? I haven't seen it. <laughs> what? <laughs> a gag. Love the first two of Bill and Ted, though. You can't fucking gag like that when other people are still shotting. <laughs> Damn, this Halfway shit's through, I almost just pushed it back. This shit is easy to... S- oh, 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 oh. I really hope oh, I don't they. have another one in the same spot as anyone. Oh. <laughs> we will. Okay, <laughs> now that our worst movies are out of the way, Laura, what is your number five pick? My number five pick is uh, Riders of Justice. 
Um, I don't know. I don't know if I have that much to say about it, but if you haven't seen it, I highly, highly recommend. I cannot wait to watch it again. I love Mads Mikkelsen. It was just a fucking baller movie. It was very funny. It's very good. Very dark. Loved it. You should watch it. It's about a man whose wife is blown up on a train and then uh, he, some random guy who's investigating the train explosion <laughs> contacts him and he's like, I don't think it was an accident. I think it was like an actual bombing. Yeah. And then it kind of spirals from there. It goes but from there. it was there. very yeah. fucking funny and also disturbing yeah it was, it was dark it was very funny it was just it funny. was fucking sick yeah, it was, it was. Wait, it's yeah. a comedy no, no it's not a comedy oh okay it has just, some just really funny moments. i don't know those danish and those oh, fucking okay. french they have very interesting ways uh south korean as well they have very great ways of blending like disturbing as fuck shit with very dark humor shit uh, yeah. perfectly well just really dry stuff and mads is fucking awesome in it it was one of those movies where I was like, oh, I'll watch it and it looks pretty good. And then it just like blew my head off. My five on the list is actually a movie that shocked me when I was watching it. I sort of just put it on as nothing and then I ended up loving it. Mm-hmm. It was um, Love and Monsters. Um, it's, Very cool. <laughs> it started um, a bit slow, but then it actually transformed in, oh, which it didn't go the route that I thought it was going to go, mm. which was turned into a generic love story. And it actually grew into something a bit more. Um, there's some pretty good performances in there for like Woody Harrelson's like quick cameo of like wild animal tamer that just knows the jungle it was pretty cool. But it's also pretty cool that like not everyone's dead in this weird post-apocalypse world. Wait, Woody Harrelson was it? No, that was Mel from The Walking Dead. Oh no! Yeah, that's right. I <laughs> yeah, I was like, I that swear was, I've seen this movie. That was fucking Michael Rooker. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they look the same though. I mean, they're the same, they're the same in fucking a role person. Like that before, but they're yeah. the same fucking person. It's fine. Adam's a savant when it comes to this shit, so I'm glad you corrected oh, me. I was literally about to say as okay, well. Good. I don't think Woody. I'm Harrison drunk. Was it's fine. We looked at uh, each other and we're like, was he in the movie? No. That's why I didn't say. <laughs> no, yeah, I was like, am he I wasn't. The <laughs> and as you said it, I'm like, fuck, I was wrong. <laughs> so so wrong i'm featuring anyway it right now. You still i really enjoyed the story um it it builds on itself and i felt like it was a bit of like finally the characters were growing and not just acting like fucking idiots all the time it was good so i recommend it for something if you're just looking for a casual watch i would say watch that i would Love honestly yeah, yeah i'd highly recommend as well it's super fun to watch mm. um and like you said surprisingly it's not, it so much end. better yeah, yes. doesn't end so much better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> and it's not just a silly little. So, oh my god, we're reunited, and they're going to live forever. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's more than that. I love the little girl that was in it with um, Woody Harrelson, the one that's walking through the jungle with him. <laughs> Mill from The Walking Dead. You mean? <laughs> Pretty sure yeah. the same writer of this movie did another movie this year that's on my list. Oh really? Oh really? Yeah. Adam. Okay, my number five pick is a movie called Shiva Baby. Yes. It was about a Jewish girl who goes to a funeral. And it was yeah, really Jewish good. Yeah, Jewish girl goes to a Shiva. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Jewish it girl goes to Shiva <laughs> where she meets her sugar daddy who is married, whose wife is also there. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Okay. It was uh, a fucking mortifying film. It was, it was sick. so intense and disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah just yeah. made me feel on edge the entire time that she was gonna get found out or he was gonna like rat her out to her family who were also at the funeral just, for being yeah. this huge piece of shit just tension the whole way through <laughs> the most horror movie comedy movie i've ever seen mm. it's like you're so stressed the whole time it's anything but a horror movie but there is some genuine scary moments by how just like grossly tense you are the entire yeah. time be like, please, I don't want this chick to get found out. <laughs> it's sick. I'm pretty sure it's on Binge or one of the other ones. I, don't can... I think it's on Prime. It's on one of those. You should watch it. It's Just really pirate good. it. It's... We're back to pirating. No. There's too many platforms. No. We are not criminals. We're back to pirating. <laughs> Fuck the platforms. Pirate at bay all the way. I mean, it's probably easier just to switch on Binge or Prime. Or steal your friends. Binge and Prime and Stan and... Um, Wow, Shiva Baby was really good. <laughs> uh, I Not recommend. Sponsored. It also has one of the funniest fucking moments I've ever seen in a movie in yeah. you know, quite some time. And it was very, very split second of the movie. It's very just 
blink or deafen yourself for one second and you'll miss it, but it's and you'll hilarious. Know. When you hear it, you'll know what he's talking about. It has to do with somebody taking a shit. <laughs> yes. Pine number four was A Quiet Place 2. Mm. Oh, damn. And it was a fucking banger of a movie. Mm. I preferred it over the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, Killian Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> I've still never seen either of those. Oh, you you should. should. They're both really sick. Yeah, the second really one really is good. better though. Oh, yeah. is it? Yep. Yeah. I've um, heard a lot of people say good things about both. So, mm. well, I just really liked because uh, I mean, you might not understand, but in the first little while, it goes back to the first day of when it started, mm. and I thought that was really interesting. And that's one of the things that I, after watching the first movie, I was like, I wonder if that's what they'll do. Cause it'd be interesting to see it happening and the first reaction to these monsters or whatever you want to call them. Yeah. Um, and they did that for a bit and it was really, it was a, I liked it the a lot. opening 10 minutes of part two is fucking crazy in the best way possible. <laughs> yeah. That's sick. That's my number four. Nice. Killian Murphy. I love you. <laughs> my number four is a movie that has Andy Samberg. In. Oh no. Oh, Brooklyn nine, nine. Yeah. Palm. Palm. <laughs> Palm it was good. That you was liked good it. Um, yeah, it was fun. That was another one that surprised the shit out of me. Mm. Uh, when I first put it on, oh, yeah, it's just probably just something. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, this is actually a pretty interesting take on the whole, like, probably doing exactly how everyone else is at, getting fucked up for a lot of the time. Done, like, to, <laughs> done to death, <laughs> Groundhog Day bullshit. Yeah, yeah, but like, yeah, they had a bit of a, a more adult spin on it where Groundhog Day didn't do the, oh yeah, I'll just fuck anything that moves and blow people up and do whatever. And then just the added of like, he accidentally drags other characters in to his bullshit too. Mm. I didn't mind that little spin. And then one of the characters acting the way probably someone would is... I'm just going to fuck your shit up for a while and just mm. murder you and mm. set you alight and shit, you know? But then she actually learns quantum mm. physics. Yeah. That. It was just a good little take. And then obviously the story of the wedding and all that and that building where it's like he's supposedly spent so much time in that reality and there's still stuff that he's learning about it. Yeah. Thing. yeah. And then past relationship. I sort of just love that, that funny bit of where he just knows where everyone's going to be standing. Oh. What's that? Just showing you where I had it on my list. <laughs> Oh, fuck! I knew I wanted to do the switch order so I could fuck No, 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 it's not on my top. No, it's oh, on his, like, one of his lower... <laughs> my long list. <laughs> lower down than that Oh, well, fuck you then. Sorry, that's in my <laughs> top. No, 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 no. Yeah. no it's I liked it. I liked Palm Springs. I was, it was yeah, good like you said. Yeah, I liked it. It was good. Yeah. It's, As you stop would. Stop pointing that way and fucking talking. I'm patting the cat. Okay, so that was mine. Adam, what's your number four so I can shit all over it? <laughs> My number four is Riders of Justice. Oh. I've already done it. <laughs> Fucking terrible movie. I haven't seen it. No one else has. But that's because it's done. It was my so number five. Here's, here's the difference, Harley. I've seen Palm Springs. Yeah. And? Oh my God. It was fine. Yeah, I know. But you don't care for it. So fuck you. Okay. <laughs> I think he fuck might be more. He, it's on his list. It's just he's done a long list. Shh, I think that's all he was around. doing. I have <laughs> over 30 movies I saw in 2020 from 2020. I, Palm think, Springs I made it literally think I have the top five movies that I saw. Like, yeah. My top five is the five movies I watched in 20. <laughs> I put every single movie on here. Yeah, because you said you didn't watch any. There is weirdly <laughs> amount of movies that I have not seen from 2020 yeah. that I was yeah. like, how have I seen more movies in 2021? So Taru. Laura, Laura, please Hello. tell the fans what your number three is. My numero three oh, um, was Pieces of a Woman. Yes. Um, I don't think either of you have seen this Did movie. Did you find them? I saw half this movie. Shut your mouth, Holly. My turn to speak. <laughs> um, it's about a this, this couple. She gives birth. The child dies within about, uh, spoilers, f- five minutes, something like that. And then it goes through their varying ways of grief. The mother has like a pretty cold cutoff way of dealing with it. The dad's super emotional, Shia LaBeouf. Um, very emotional. And it's just like goes through this like journey of them dealing with this and splitting up and her wanting to donate the child to medical research and stuff like that. And it was really fucking sad and it was really fucking good. 
a lot of long shots and superb acting, and I would highly recommend, but you will probably cry, as I did several times. Sounds like a comedy for the family. Damn right. Mm. <laughs> watch yeah. it with all your young ones. Make sure like, you watch. Oh, I wish this had and happened. And then you put on Ed oh afterwards. And then you put Ed on Ed afterwards to like calm the mood until to it get, the mood. until it gets to the death monkey scene in the freezer, and then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Hold on. Before we continue, I'm going to get another bit. Is this the one you... No, oh. this is actually a movie I do enjoy and I did like, and you guys would never have seen this. Is it a porno? Because I movie? can tell you I've definitely seen it. No, this is an animation. Oh. Um, it's a part of the DC um, universe. It's um, Superman Red Sun. That's so my it's, number one. It's um, sure. Superman lands in Soviet Russia instead of the USA. And it's just that story. Um, Black Widow. No, it's Superman in Russia, though. No. But he becomes a juggernaut for Russia. And Lex Luthor is a good guy for America that still hates Superman. Mm. And then Superman sort of like... It's that like growing of like going, what would that be like in terms of the mm. world power and stuff? And the struggles and all that stuff. And then he ends up becoming like the leader and gets betrayed and all this jazz. It's a pretty good story. Um, there's even a Russian Batman. Which is fucking. Oh, I swear you've told us about this. Um, you've mentioned this. For and he's sure. fucking crazy. It's fucking hilarious. I recommend it. It's pretty good. Fucking DC definitely do better animations than they do live action. That's for sure. <laughs> um, so I definitely recommend it because it was fucking good. Thank you. Watch I it. won't be watching it. I know you won't, but yeah. the fans at home might. I hope so. And then they'll put on Ed afterwards and watch Ed. Stop. Uh, <laughs> I'll be like, this is your second movie. Stop going watch. back to Ed. I regret bringing it up. We're about 20 episodes away from the Ed year. Yeah. And I know. We probably, and I'm going like, to mention what, Ed every year now. Ed is going to be No, no. Ed is already my number one thing. <laughs> Join us next time with a new guest. Yeah. <laughs> um, still he's we're going to just boot Ed. you out because you keep mentioning Ed. James <laughs> Lister has replaced Harley. Probably Todd. Adam, what was your number three? My number three pick is a romantic comedy titled Spontaneous. Um, it had Catherine Langford from 13 Reasons Why and Charlie Plummer from The Clovehitch Killer and Looking for Alaska. Uh, just a group of students... Uh, sorry, fuck. <laughs> it's about a group of students who just out of nowhere, one of their classmates spontaneously explodes in a giant fucking pool of blood. Spontaneously combusts. And then the two main characters who've never really talked, they bond and they finally ask it, oh, one of them finally asks the other out. Um, and yeah, that's it. One by one, all the students just start popping like zits throughout the school. Mm. And it's just them making Jesus. the most, making a, the most of fun. their time together before they inevitably fucking explode. Yeah. <laughs> and just die. But it's actually a very funny movie. This was also written by the guy who did Love and Monsters. Fact check that, Adam. <laughs> yeah, I think you might be right, though. I think I'm that's pretty the, sure either that's it's true. that or he's the same director. Mm. But no, right. Spontaneous was very sweet, very funny, and I sad. thought, yeah, very sad, but also very well edited. I thought, yeah, did that classic uh, like editing trope where someone would be like. And then he said this, and it cuts to that person saying, saying that exact the exact same line. Which is very funny, <laughs> and I, that, I love that. It's always a good little editing gag. Fair no, thing. Spontaneous, I was not expecting much from, but I thoroughly fucking enjoyed it and think it might be. Yeah, literally, I think you were like, oh, all right, let's just watch this. And we did, and mm. we loved it. On a whim. Oh, ah, yes, I saw the trailer for this movie. It's really mm. good. I think you'd really yeah. enjoy it. Surprisingly, Catherine Langford, who I find normally fucking unbearable, probably because she's Australian and I hate yeah. hearing my own accent in movies and shit accent. Uh, she was great and so was Charlie Plummer as per usual he was fantastic You'd also brought back Piper Perabo, who fuck knows where she's been for the past 10 to 15 she's years. She's been hot. Coyote Ugly and Cheaper by the Dozen. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Brian uh, Dunfeld is something to do with um, Love and Monsters. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. There you go. Oh, and the Diversion series. <laughs> Which we don't, oh, we don't need to talk about that. That's a uh, hit on the old. Uh, that d- they didn't even finish that. No, series. they didn't. They they cut the last one into two parts, <laughs> and then only did part yeah. one. <laughs> and apparently, and apparently no one went to see part one. 
weeks. Oh, fuck no. Like, well, <laughs> what's the So point? they cancelled part two, and I'm like, fucking hell. Why did they ever cut up fucking the last one? No one saw the first two. It. Why would anyone have seen the... Ah, weird. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, what is your number two? My number now? two is um, Mads Mikkelsen shows up again. Right. This was, I believe, the winner of our Oscars foreign foreign movie, film um, a movie called Another Round. I loved it. I loved it. It was one of those movies that I thought about for ages after we watched it as well. Um, these teachers talk about an experiment that someone did or a research that, that someone did about that humans are born with minus alcohol level mm-hmm. um, and therefore they drink during the day because they think it's potentially we're supposed to have a high level of alcohol you know, so um, and it obviously progresses into alcoholism. Yes. <laughs> um, and it's funny and dark and... Um, What's his name? The director, Thomas. Thomas Vicken... Winter something. Winterberg. Winterberg. I really, really like him. I like his style. I loved this movie. Huge recommend. Um, That's really all I want to say. All right, so my number two. It is Justice League Dark. The DC Universe, in terms of um, animation, Mm -hmm. have fucking... running movie series of like 15 years now Mm -hmm. it's coming to an end like i think the last couple are about to come out um and all the movies tie into each other so justice league dark is um pretty good it 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 does it stems more away from the actual justice league itself and some fringe characters that are a massive part of like the stories and stuff but they've never really had a front billing Mm. And this time, so you, um, you're following Constantine after a failed um, attempt to take down the bad guys. Mm. So the world is taken over. So the world fully is engulfed, taken over by a particular character. I don't want to give it away. Who? But I am a bit too drunk to remember his name, but I don't want to say it anyway. So he's taking it over and the story is about Constantine and the, um, fuck, what's his dragon friend? No, his demon friend. They're just running around Fire. and... Um, a kryptonite-infused Superman, so he's human, mm-hmm. comes to um, get his services to help him try and take back over. And they run into a Batman that has been ingrained and he's now a computer, but he works for, he's been conditioned to work for the bad guy. And it's about them trying to take back the world for themselves. And it's full of, like, cast in different areas and mm. different scenarios, like where people are dead, People are injured, stuff like that. Like the Flash got like zapped into oblivion, and it was amazing. Uh, Bat- Batman loves his one of his sons. What's his name? Well, Batman makes love to one of his sons. That's no, hard. loves one of his sons after he's a hard ass to him. <laughs> makes love. In, um, well, and Damien uh, he gives it hard Argles. to his ass. <laughs> pretty, I'm pretty sure it's Damien. Yeah, it's Damien Argyle's the one. But trust me, watch it. Amazing, love it. I'm a bit taste. Okay. I've watched it several times. It's good. Okay. My... Hey, Adam. Yes. What's your number two? My number two <laughs> is a film called The Wolf of Snow Hollow. What the fuck? What? How did I not think of that? Because... Is that 2020? An idiot. <laughs> Damn. I wish I saw that one too. Damn. I, for some reason, Spontaneous isn't on, even on my honourable mentions and neither is Wolf. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? Anyway, please continue. Yes, Wolf of Snow Hollow is a fucking phenomenal film. It's very small budget. It's about a small town in... Massachusetts. <laughs> Massachusetts. Is it? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I, I thought you knew the answer. No, but... I have guessed. Fuck it. Come Florida. On. It is in the small town of Utah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Snowy mountain range area. Anyway, it's about a small community... And there is a werewolf on the loose. That's it. We love Jimmy Cummings. <laughs> no, Jim Cummings. Car- Car- oh, fuck. Car- 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 Jim Cummings, he writes, directs, and acts as the main character in this. It's about him as a piece of shit, dickhead, <laughs> fucking alcoholic. Just a pathetic, <laughs> angry man. Yeah, oh, and the town ridiculous. coming to grips that, oh my God, werewolves. Like, I, I guess. They're all, a lot of them are like... No, there's the, well, I guess everyone's like, oh, it's got to be a werewolf because it's like 
beast marks and there's giant footprints everywhere. And mm. the whole time, the main guy, played by Jim Cummings, is like, no, it's a guy. Be a fucking cop. <laughs> Do <Yeah>. your job. <laughs> but then he's also like, we're going to find him and kill him. Uh, I mean, <laughs> arrest bring him. It, bring him to justice. <laughs> It's very just funnily written, um, very awkward, uncomfortable. But His humour is s- ridiculous. Super like, fucking so dry. So funny. No, these are all really good fleshed out characters. Um, there's a genuine mystery and I will not spoil it, but I think the last 10 minutes actually fucking sold it as almost being my favourite movie of the year. It nearly toppled my number one. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, that's it. Go check out Wolf of Snow Hollow. It's fucking sick. Yeah, recommend. Hard now, to give approval. Quick fire yes. round. Oh god. What are your honorable mentions? All right. I'm not explaining these. I'm just mentioning no, them. No, just mention them. All right. Shiva Baby, The Father, The Devil All the Time, Love and Monsters, Minari, Trial of the Chicago Seven, and The Vast of Night. Right. Harley, what are your honorable mentions if you have any? Yeah, um, the wolf said. movie we were just talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Wolf of Snow Hollow. <coughs> yeah, uh, Mulan, <coughs> just because it came up on my phone. No, uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Because it was made. Uh, Tenant didn't see it. So, no, sorry. Honorable you don't men- even watch movies. Honor- honorable mention that I actually saw. Okay. Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> You actually make me sick. I got halfway through that movie. <laughs> Alright, well. You make me so fucking angry. Fuck! I should, have, I should have made that my number one! Oh, gotta go fast! I gotta go fast. Okay, my quick fire honorable mentions are Relic, Possessor, Another Round, Trial of Chicago 7, and Love and oh. Monsters. That's it. Laura, drum roll. What is your number one? My number one. And your number one, probably. No. no. Yeah. My number one <laughs> is Promising Young Woman. Um... Laura, what is Promising Young Woman about? Rape. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just, just on... No, no, it's... How fucking lovely. <laughs> no, nah, what's it about? Just rape. Uh, it is. It's it is. rape culture. And it's talking about how... Um, I don't know. It was just one of those movies I... Didn't think I would probably see for a really long time mm. that we see a movie that's literally you don't have really one redeeming male character, and I really enjoyed that because the whole story is really about this woman's friend was raped um, and, she and just herself. yeah, and she killed herself and just rape culture in general, and it's kind of like. Semi, she's a vigilante, goes out. Purposely looks like she's shit-faced to make and men then to do see, a creepy. To see what men would do. Oh, uh, yeah. okay, to take advantage of the creeps. Yes. Yeah. Well, they take her home and she sees how far they try to fuck her. Like, if they will try to make out with her or... If they actually try to have sex remarks, with her. Try to rape her or... They will just put her to bed. Yeah. It's pretty much her um, seeing really who's good. a creep and then threatening to call him out. And the casting was brilliant. Um, they cast a lot of men or actors that we generally love that are likable. comedy. McLovin. Fucking, uh, what's his name? Schmidt. Seth. Oh, Schmidt. Yeah, from New Girl. Um, fuck me. Bo Burnham. Bo Burnham. It was really fucking good and... I highly recommend it. I like the way they ended it. Yes, very much so. I've rewatched the ending more than I've rewatched the actual movie. <laughs> yeah, because I think they had to do it that way. Um, probably one of my top movies of all time at the moment. It's mm. sitting in there. So, yep, that's my number one of 2020. Yep. Holly, what is your number one of 2020? And is Boy. it also about rape? Bill and Ted's Face the Music. God damn it. (laughs) This was the best movie I've ever seen. (laughs) This was incredible, this movie. It is a masterpiece. You should all watch it, and then you can all hate on it. Um, I love Bill and Ted, (laughs) the first two. This one was a bit eh. No, it was a lot more than eh. It was fucking annoying and shit me, but it'll do. They made another Bill and Ted. Boy, I'm going to put it as my number one. (laughs) Yeah, Keanu and Old Mate uh, look fucking old. They look old, older than they do in person. Like Surprisingly, yeah. Keanu looks a lot worse than Alex Winter does, though. Yeah, 
Yeah, but then you see photos of them at other things, and it's like, how do they not look as old as they did? What? Do they get aged in the movie? Or? No, Keanu just doesn't have a beard in that movie. <laughs> that's is the that whole, it? That's oh, all it is. Yeah. He's too much chin. His old man chin <laughs> is showing. God. That's entirely what it is. <laughs> I remember just thinking, I'm like, fuck, they look so old. I know they are old, but I swear they never look that old. God damn. 2020 was a really fucking hard year. 2020 was a pretty crap year for movies overall, but there were some good ones in there. There's some bangers. There's and unfortunately, there wasn't a Muppets move to be my number one. Uh, so. Fortunately not. You're going to have to go all the way back to... I'm pretty sure Treasure one. Island. No, 19... Space. I'm pretty sure Space was yeah, the last one. And only... that was like, I think, 01 maybe? Around then? I'm pretty sure, yeah. It's either... 2000 on the dot or 01 yeah around then or even 99 around that time mm. it's a long time so we've got a while till we talk about Muppets in space thank god <laughs> it'll be on my list so. I know so I know as an alien Laura how do you feel about what is Gonzo wrong with Muppets as an alien about what Gonzo as an alien who's Gonzo yes is he the shrimp thank you goodbye <laughs> Uh, apparently we didn't record it, but, uh, my number one pick was also Promising Young Woman.